Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. Oh boy, oh boy. We have been through it a bit. And from time to time, we've been cracked like an egg. So I'm making omelets up here this morning, <laughs> right into my coffee. <laughs> you know, it's fragile. We know that. Sometimes we can all feel a bit broken and discouraged. But kids at home and here in the Heights, I want you to go grab an egg. And at home, maybe in a bit, you can do this. And if you crack it on its side, it breaks open, right? And then we make scrambled eggs and omelets. But if you put an egg completely in your hand, it's one of the strongest things in creation. Dare me? <laughs> Dare me to do it? <clears throat> you all want to try it, don't you? And kids, in a little bit, I will allow you to do that as well. It is monumental hope that we sing this morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. It's the promise that God is for you with all that you have going on, specifically for you. Even though sometimes things feel like they're against you, God is for you. So let's celebrate Easter together. Welcome to lifelong faith. My kids, my kids and I, we were making these rabbits, and I encourage you to do that as home as well, kids. You can put your palm down on the table, trace it, and then you know what you do? You cut out the middle digit. So it's a little nod to the second commandment. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. And as a pastor, I can even have some colorful language even at home. And I told the kids, I want to work on that, okay? <laughs> pastor Noah needs to work on that. Uh, they don't call me Pastor Noah, but Dad needs to work on that. And so we cut out the middle digit, and then there you have it, an Easter bunny. So kids, check that out as well. If it's your first time with us, we believe that you are with us not on accident. We pray for you. And I want to consider you to consider taking the next step with us, and it's a very easy one. If you're gathering with us at home, you can go to our website, holycrossduluth.org, and you can sign up for emails, and you can stay connected to me and our parish and all that we have going on. It's the best way to find out about all the things that are going on here at church. And VBS, before you know it, will be here. And I want you to think about your kids and grandkids free. Uh, you don't have to be a member. Drop them off. Get involved August 1st through the 4th. It's the most beautiful time of the year in Minnesota from 9 to noon. We will have registration up and running soon. We now gather our all that we are, from the organ bench to our brass, to all the people who have made Lent and Holy Week and Easter possible, from our leadership to staff, what an effort. Let's give everybody a round of applause, huh? <laughs> And it's now your opportunity to help, to get involved, to journey with us in a crystal clear vision of lifelong faith here in the Heights, leading all people to a lifelong faith in Jesus Christ. And you can do that at home, on our website, in person with us as our offering plates go around now. It is with great joy this Easter season that Abby and I, we give to this special place and we invite you into that as well. Well, you can text any amount, and also, if it's a bit confusing at home or here, you can always give us a call as we invite you into relevant worship, connecting with one another, serving the heights, and a generous life of 
thanksgiving. It is what God is calling us all into. Folks, happy Easter. He is risen for you. We gather our offering now. God's work, our hands. risen and so are we. Let us rise.
Christ is risen. He is is risen risen indeed. indeed. On that first Easter, the women, they journeyed to the tomb. All were trembling and afraid. When they arrived at the tomb, they discovered it was empty. They doubted, they feared, they were struck with awe. They had journeyed from the joy of Palm Sunday to that dark Friday in the cross. But now it is Sunday. But now it was Sunday. The inconceivable had happened. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Oh God, you have your only son to suffer death on the cross for our sake. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. We give thanks that the unbelievable events of that first Easter, you set us free from our fears and fill us forever with your hope and joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives with you and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And now a reading from Psalms. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. 
The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rise and welcome the gospel in our midst, the gospel of Resurrection Sunday. I know that my Redeemer lives. You may be seated. Indeed. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. The weather, it's been a bit rough. Amen? <laughs> oh, I love seeing the sun this morning. Easter sunrise. It was a beautiful evening last night as the sun went down and the moon. And then we were met with Easter sunrise. 
Spring, here, in this great city, it's not for the faint of heart. It's a transition period. Our trail system, they're closed a bit as it thaws. They don't want people trekking through the mud. No running on the trails, they say. So I haven't sat around this much probably in my whole life. I'm now looking at one of those standing desks so I can stand next to Jessica so I'm not sitting so much. I took a break yesterday during my final preparations for all of you and I ran my normal four mile loop on pavement to get some of the cobwebs off. And then there is this guy. Do you recognize him? Did anyone watch any golf last weekend? He has made an incredible return. He is so amazing to watch. He began his career in 1995. Can you remember all the way back to 1995? What were you doing in 1995? Well, this guy, he started his tour on the Masters at just 19 years old. And since then, he's made, get this, $1.7 billion playing golf. It's incredible. And then he has a car crash, nearly has his leg amputated, and 14 months later, he comes back and he's playing golf again. And he's just not playing that anger. He's playing at the Masters. He shoots three over par each round. Three over par on one of the most difficult courses in the game, especially when the wind is swirling. Wow. You kidding me? Three over par. Rich and Rick, they'll tell you. That's what I shoot on every hole. <laughs> Just look at what Tiger has done, his life. And when I think about my life, it's a bit discouraging. There's no comparison. Or how about this guy? 44, and he tried to retire from football, playing the most difficult position and the most physically demanding sport on the planet, and they won't let him. Sure, it's awe-inspiring, but sometimes a bit discouraging when I sit there and watch ESPN. What have I done? There's no comparison. I'm not sure why. Maybe because they're around my age. My body is beginning its first steps into a bit of a decline and they seem to be just humming along. Or how about this legend? He's 75 years old. It's incredible what Sir Elton John's fingers can still do at this age, still touring the world stage. I've got to say, I feel young at heart, but still sometimes feel like I'm here. <laughs> young at heart for sure and ready for all that life has in store but I'm now middle age I first came to you as a 36 year old in relatively good shape now I'm 40 I looked in the mirror yesterday and saw a predominantly gray beard staring back at me and it freaked me out so I shaved more and more when I look in the mirror, I don't see Baby Yoda. I see this guy. <laughs> it most certainly can be discouraging. In all seriousness, it occurs to me, what we've all been through a lot over the last couple of years has been difficult. Some of us have lost loved ones. We've had a number of funerals in our church family lately that have rocked us to the core. We lost. 
We lost memories that should have been made. We turn on the TV or scroll and we see a war in the likes of what we haven't seen since the Eastern Front in 1940. Barbasoa and Germany's assault into Moscow. Such terrible and senseless bloodshed. There is a lot that feels broken, feels as though things have been stolen from us. And I imagine those women on that first Easter as they went to the tomb, they felt the same way that we do, feeling a bit discouraged. They felt like the world was broken. They felt like something had been stolen, felt like someone had been stolen from them on that first Easter. And in Luke chapter 20, 24, it says on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices they had prepared and they went to the tomb. As they went to the tomb, it felt like things were broken, shattered, and they felt discouraged. And we know what it feels like when things are broken, when things have been stolen. Maybe your marriage, it isn't what you imagined it to be. It feels like something's been stolen. Maybe your kids, they didn't turn out the way you imagined or they made choices you didn't imagine they would make and it feels like something's been stolen from you. Maybe your career isn't where you wanted it to be or maybe you have all the money in the world like Tiger, but you just can't find happiness. Something feels broken, a bit off, something feels stolen. Maybe your body doesn't keep up with your mind or maybe your mind, it just won't keep up with your body. Maybe you've got some health concerns, whatever it might be. I think we all know what it feels like to feel as though things are broken. Things have been stolen from us. And those women who went to the tomb on that first Easter, they get it. And yet, and yet, in the midst of all of it, here's what I love about this morning. And the greatest story ever told, this part, this and only this part, the tomb was not the end of the story. When those women got to the tomb, it says they found that the stone was rolled away, and when they entered, they did not find the body of Jesus. While they're deeply confused and concerned, we get it, suddenly, Two men in clothes that gleam like lightning, Scripture says, stood beside them. And in their fright, the women, they bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living? Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. He is risen. Say it. One more time with me. And if you can't simply muster the energy and excitement, we'll say it for you. Three, two, one. He is risen. This Easter, if there's one thing that I pray will go with you, it's this. That Easter that happened so long ago wasn't sort of a one-time historical event that happened. So... Once a year, you and I could gather together in our homes. We can pull out the chocolate rabbits. You know what my favorite thing to do with those chocolate rabbits is? To cut the ears off, okay? Cut the ears off, and it opens up, and then I pour chocolate milk into it. <laughs> and then I put a straw, and my girls love it. Try it. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. It's one of my favorite things all year. Eating peeps. Anyone like peeps? Oh, they are so good. <laughs> they are so good. Or having grandma make that honey-baked ham that's all waiting for us. No, right now, Easter resurrection, the new life of Easter is something that's so much more. It's that God wants 
you to remember that every day, regardless of what's going on, God is for you. If God could raise Jesus from the dead, he can raise anything from the dead in your life and mine. Alleluia. Alleluia. Here's the truth of the greatest story ever told. The tomb and their discouragement and all that felt broken for those women on that first Easter was not the end of the story. And it's not the end of the story for you and me. So, whatever is in your past, it's not the end. The tomb isn't the end. In fact, for when they got there, they had a couple of guys who looked back at them and said, he's not here, he's risen. Amen. Just think, around this table, all that Jesus is going to raise, that God in Christ Jesus that is gifted to you now at this table, just think of all that he will raise in your life moving forward, onward, all possible. 
For in the night in which he handed himself over, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. On this Resurrection Sunday, we gather our hearts, our minds, all that we are, and we pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus has taught us. We pray it here in the Heights now and with all of our beloved at home. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come now to the Easter banquet, for all is now ready. You will be ushered forward, you will receive the bread from me, and then the wine on each side. You'll take your cup and place it in the red basket on your way back to be seated. Come now, all are welcome, no exceptions. So 
Let us rise. Hey, I get it. I know that you have a lot going on. But do not count out Christ's presence, promised presence for you as you now go. Resurrection is always yours. The tomb will never, whatever it may be in your life, it will never hold you down. For Christ resides in you. This is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. God, the offer of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is the day of resurrection. risen he is risen indeed go in peace dear church to love and serve the lord thanks be to god
warrior victor.